Hello and a warm welcome. This is the news on Inter International reaching you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. My name is Justin Bemunye and Precious Ozemina is the sign language interpreter. First, let's look at the major stories. Nigerian judiciary sets new standard for justice dispensation, begins ICT training for court managers nationwide. Chief of Army Staff on beat on Nigeria's security apparatus vows to rout terrorists out of their hidings. And Kenyan president set to dialogue with youths to end protests. In a significant show of commitment to regional security, the federal government has reaffirmed its dedication to ending insecurity in the Northwest region. Speaking at the Northwest Peace and Security Summit in Katsina State, Vice President Kashim Shatima pledged the government's unwavering support for the region, urging stakeholders to work together towards a common goal of a peaceful and prosperous Northwest. Howell Haliru reports. The summit organized by the Northwest go, Governors me, Forum yeah. in collaboration with the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, aims to foster regional cooperation, strengthen security efforts, and promote sustainable development in the region. The Vice President's keynote address set the tone for the summit, which brought together governors from the seven Northwest states and development partners. He emphasized the need for collective action to address the region's insecurity challenges. I have also identified a roadmap that includes integrating military, political and socio-economic strategies, enhancing cross-border cooperation, investing in youth empowerment and education, strengthening local institutions, promoting inclusive dialogue, prioritizing prevention and resilient building measures, and engaging regional neighbors for support. Governor Duko Umarurata of Katsina State, who hosted the summit, praised the federal government's commitment to regional security. We must act with urgency, determination, and unity of purpose. Let us build a region where every citizen can live in peace. We are committed to ending this thing, and we are committed, and we are open, and we are ready for all possible collaboration. We will be the ones to work for this and end these problems if we so desire. Nobody will come from somewhere to work for us. The UNDP resident representative reiterated the organization's support for region's development and security efforts. She stressed the importance of addressing the root causes of insecurity. The Northwest region holds immense potential for transformation as we navigate the challenges of fragility. The region, her people and leaders embody the resilience, hope and potential that needs to be connected to opportunity. This inaugural peace summit is an important milestone for this collective shift and for moving the needle toward achieving not only peace and security, but in a broader manner, the sustainable development goal in Nigeria. The summit will feature panel discussions and presentations on various topics, and participants are expected to share experiences and best practices and experts to offer insights and recommendations. In Katsana, Awal Halleru, NTA News. The Chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tauri Lagbaja, has again assured Nigerians of combating all enemies of the state in line with the constitutional provisions, as the media have called for strategic and third-party communication, synergy and constant engagement in addressing some of the contemporary security challenges. Now, this came to the fore at a roundtable discussion put together by Development Specs Academy in collaboration with Nigerian Institute of Public Relations and other organizations. Haman Jabani reports. The engagement with the team, Symmetrical National Security Challenges, the Army and the National Development is designed to strengthen public awareness about security challenges, project national interest in communication with our propaganda, and define the roles of the citizens in supporting the military as collaborative efforts will help in addressing security challenges in the country. Chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tauri Lobaja, 
is glad that the platform will provide a better understanding of the military's role in national security and address misconception about their operations while combating all enemies of the state in line with the constitutional provisions. That is why the army is open to ideas, is open to opinions from all segments of the society. The army, it is the people's army. We are working to bring about the peace and security that Nigerians yearn so much for. We must continue because the first issue is there is a problem. Once we recognize the problem, what are the solutions? And we keep on trudging ahead to be able to solve the problem ourselves. So the citizens must be carried along. President Global Alliance, President NIPR, Development Spec Academy and other partners believe that telling your own story using a third party, understanding national interest reporting, and strategic communication by the army are some of the ways to tackle the insecurity being faced. The most powerful thing in the armed forces is communication. The most powerful weapon in the armed forces is communication. When we don't take responsibility in whatever we are doing as we report our nation, we leave our nation vulnerable to the risk of assessment and perception by other nations. Whatever we think is an interest, we inform them. That is no longer happening. That's part of the crisis. So the challenges are symmetrical. A trained soldier has a target to shoot. Today, the target you want to shoot is embedded. It's part of the village. It's part of the community. And people in the community are helping them procure arms. It's asymmetrical. They believe that by sharing experiences and achievements, the military can provide a balanced view of the nation's security challenges and effort to address them can be in hand. Hamad Jabani, NTA News. The Nigeria Police Trust Fund will procure additional modern equipment for officers to perform their duties effectively. Executive Secretary of the Fund, Saidu Mohammed, at a meeting which with staff in Abuja says improving the welfare of police officers is the mandate of the fund and there are initiatives aimed at ensuring better living conditions and health care for personnel. Inshallah, we will finish all projects that we have outstanding and there are more projects to come. My assurance is good welfare, retraining and training and a stronger and better secure Nigeria with a better police force. Mohammed assured Nigerians that funds will be invested in the construction and maintenance of police stations, barracks and other infrastructure. Now elsewhere, President William Ruto says he will engage Kenyan youth to address the concerns they have raised over the Finance Bill 2024. The bill was uh, said to involve punitive tax measures that will pile further pressure on young Kenyans struggling with cost of living surges, with well-paid jobs remaining out of reach. Comfort Fashion reports. Speaking at the consecration ceremony of the Inyahururu Anglican Church, the president said, and I quote, we are going to have a conversation with you so that we can listen to your issues, end of quote. What I want to assure them is that we are concerned about their issue. In this year's budget, I have enhanced the budget going to CDF to increase by 10 billion so that young people can get bursary and young people, we can build ICT hub so that these young people can get digital jobs because we know the challenge of unemployment in our country. He commanded the youth for exercising their democratic right to voice their concerns in a peaceful manner. <laughs> President Ruto noted that the youth have stepped forward tribeless and assured them that he is concerned about the issues they have raised. Archbishop Jackson Ole Sapit termed the youth protest a discerning moment and called on the protesters to be lawful. He also urged the authorities to exercise restraints in dealing with the protesters. What is happening is something unexpected and extraordinary, he said. The Gen Zs have no tribe, no religion, no class, but they are our children. They are not enemies of the nation, he added. 
this past week, young Kenyans took to the streets protesting against high taxes in dozens of towns and cities across the country. They want a finance bill that has passed through the first reading in the parliament, seeking to introduce new taxes withdrawn. Human rights organizations said so far two protesters have died from injuries they suffered during the demonstration. Comforts fashion. NTA News. We now move to India where lawmakers begin taking their oaths as parliament opens after an election setback forced Prime Minister Narendra Modi into a coalition government for the first time in a decade. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also took oath as a member of parliament at the 18th Lok Sabha session on June 24. Again, Comfort Fashion tells us more. The parliamentary session kicks off with newly elected lawmakers taking their oath over the first two days. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was sworn in as a member of the 18th Lok Sabha Lower House, marking his third consecutive term in office. Prime Minister Modi addressed the newly elected MPs, emphasizing the significance of the session. Bharat ki prabhuta aur akhandata he said today is a day of pride for India's democracy. This election is particularly notable as for the second time since independence, a government has been given the mandate to serve for a third consecutive term. The Prime Minister also praised the increased representation of youth in the 18th Lok Sabha, calling it a matter of happiness. Modi's first two terms in office followed landslide wins for his right-wing Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, allowing his government to drive laws through parliament with only cursory debates. But now, analysts expect the 73-year-old Modi to moderate his Hindu nationalist agenda to assuage his coalition partners, focusing more on infrastructure, social welfare and economic reforms. Minister of Parliamentary Affairs Kiran Rijejo on Monday called for a peaceful and productive session, but Indian media said they expected lively debates with a far stronger opposition. This historic session of the oath taking marks the first time a swearing in ceremony is being held in the new parliament building since independence. Comforts, Fashion, NTA News. Now, French far-right leader Jordan Badella says that his National Rally Party is ready to take power six, six days before voting in France's most divisive election in decades. The National Rally is today the only movement capable of implementing the aspirations clearly and reasonably expressed by the French people. Badella, 28, told a press conference as he set out the party's program for government. President Emmanuel Macron called snap parliamentary elections following his defeat by the RN in European elections. The move stunned the country and put the far right in pole position to win power for the first time in France's post-war history. Weekend polls showed the RN garnering 35 to 36 percent of voting intentions in the first round ahead of a left wing alliance on 27 to 29.5 percent and macron's centrists in third on 19.5 to 22 percent badella the telegenic party president credited with helping the rn clean up its extremist image has urged voters to give the eurosceptic party an outright majority to allow it to implement its anti-immigration law and order program the election is shaping up as a clash between the RN and the left, led by the hard left France on bowed of veteran firebrand Jean Luc Mélenchon. A top US general is making a rare trip to Africa to discuss ways to preserve some of the US presence in West Africa after Niger decided to kick out the US military in favor of partnering with Russia in a major setback for Washington. Air Force General C.Q. Brown, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, told reporters before landing in Botswana on Monday 
for a gathering of African chiefs of defense that he was going to speak with several partners in the region. Comfort Fashion tells us more. The first U.S. troops withdrawal from bases in Niger and Chad and the potential to shift some troops to other nations in West Africa will be key issues as a top U.S. military officer meets with his counterparts this week at a Chiefs of Defense conference. General C.Q. Brown, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, arrived in Botswana Monday as the U.S. faces a critical inflection point in Africa. Increasingly, military junctures that overthrew democratic government in Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger are reassessing their ties to the U.S. and the West and turning instead to mercenaries linked to Russia for security assistance. Speaking to reporters as he traveled to Gaborone, Brown said that as the U.S. pulls its 1,000 troops out of Niger, including from a critical counterterrorism and drone bases there, other West African nations want to work with the U.S. and may be open to an expanded American presence. The conference, he said, will give him a chance to speak with a number of his African counterparts and listen to their objectives and concerns. Brown, however, declined to say which can countries were under consideration, but a U.S. official revealed that President Joe Biden's administration has had initial conversations with countries including Benin, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. Brown and other defense officials said the conference is a chance to show African leaders that the U.S. can listen and accept local solutions. Comfort, fashion, and to news. You're watching the news and enter international. We now take a break. More reports when we return to stay with us. Tuberculosis, popularly known as TB, is an airborne disease that can be contacted by anybody regardless of age, tribe, and socioeconomic status. Despite availability of new testing equipment for TB, diagnosing TB in children is still more difficult than in adults. During the National Childhood TB Testing Week that will be taking place across the country, Healthcare workers from the national and state TB programs, with support of various partners, will visit our communities to create more awareness and conduct screening and testing for TB among children. TB is treatable and curable only if detected early. Every child's life matters. Let us join hands together and end TB among our children and in Nigeria. Thank you. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The federal government of Nigeria warns vandals of national assets, electricity transmission towers, cables and other facilities to desist from this act of sabotage. Vandalism is a serious crime punishable under the law. Vandalizing electrical equipment will affect millions of Nigerians including your loved ones. Remember that national assets belong to all of us, hence the need to protect them. Report all cases of suspicious movement around electrical facilities to security agencies. When you see something, say something. This message is from the Federal Ministry of Information and National Orientation in collaboration with the National Counter-Terrorism Center, NCTC, Office of the National Security Advisor. Now, gunmen attack churches and synagogues in Russia's North Caucasus region of Dagestan, killing at least eight, eight police and National Guard officers and a priest. The attack has left 19 police officers and several civilians dead. Comfort Fashion tells us more. Attacks on police posts, churches and synagogue in Russia's North Caucasus, Republic of Dagestan, have left more than 19 police officers and several civilians dead, and six of the gunmen were also killed. The coordinated attacks targeted the cities of Dabans and Makachkala on the Orthodox Festival of Pentecost. The assailants have not been identified, but Dagestan has in the past been the scene of Islamist attacks. Two churches and a synagogue were targeted in Sunday's attack, as well as a police post in Makachkala, Dagestan's largest city. Another of those church priests was also among those killed. At least 16 people were taken to hospital with injuries. Mr. Melikov announced that three days of mourning would begin on Monday.
And in South Korea, a massive fire broke out at a lithium battery factory with scores of fatalities, including 18 Chinese nationals. Firefighter Kim Jin Yong said over 100 people were working in the factory when workers had a series of explosions from the second floor where lithium ion batteries were being inspected and packaged. The vast factory had an estimated 35,000 battery cells on the second floor in storage, with more batteries stored in other areas. South Korea's President Yong suk yeol issued emergency instructions to authorities to mobilize all available personnel and equipment to focus on searching and rescuing people. Comfort, Fashion, NTA News. The International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, has called for an immediate cessation of attacks on the Ukrainian city of Enohoda, a town near the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, following drone strikes this week that targeted two electricity substations in the area. Noting the increase in drone attacks on the plant and its surroundings, IAEA Director General Rafael Grozzi said these attacks were completely unacceptable and must stop. Grozzi said in a statement on the IAEA website that this is completely unacceptable and it runs counter to the safety pillars and concrete principles which have been accepted unanimously. However, Grozzi did not mention Ukraine in his statement and confirmed that the incident did not directly impact the operation of the power plant. He noted that although power to Enehoda was cut for 16 hours, the attacks did not affect the power lines critical for the plant's operation. Despite disruptions to some infrastructure facilities, including the transport department and print shop, the nuclear safety measures at the plant remained fully operational, according to the plant's Rosh, uh, Russian management. The plant's Russian installed officials accused a Ukraine of carrying out the drone strikes, which reportedly destroyed one substation, damaged another, and temporarily cut power to residents. So far, Ukrainian officials have not commented on the incidents. The Zaporizhia plant, captured by the Russian military in the early days of the Russia-Ukraine conflict in 2022, has been a point of contention with the two sides regularly accusing each other of compromising the facility's safety. Currently, the plant is not producing electricity. The IAEA maintains inspectors at the Zaporizhia plant to monitor the situation. Now, as a way of ensuring proper adjudication on cases, the judiciary is giving premium to nurturing high standards of performance for better service delivery in the justice sector. To achieve this goal, chief registrars, heads of judicial service commissions, deputy chief registrars, directors and deputy directors are in Abuja to interact on ways to ensure effective management of cases. Delhi Atumbi of our judiciary desk. Now reports. On learning, real learning, and learning of the new trends in justice delivery are major ways of achieving the expected reforms in the justice sector. Considering the multifaceted nature of justice administration and the many innovations in this regard, emphasis is now on the relevance of information and communications technology in court management and administration. Of a fact, ICT penetrates all aspects of life and now a powerful tool to increase transparency, court efficiency, and the quality of services being rendered by the courts. Participants are expected to identify current challenges in ICT, improve technology, and proactively address them for effective service delivery. As court managers, their relationship with judicial officers in their respective courts is paramount to the attainment of speedy dispensation of justice among the litigants. The court managers are expected to be respectful, cordial, and transparent in their dealings with the judicial officers they are working with and who equally depend on their services. While carrying out your duties, you must abide by and uphold the code of conduct of, for court staff, which serves as a guide to achieve a high, a high standard of performance for a better service delivery. I therefore urge you to shun all forms of corrupt practices that could bring the judiciary to, to disrepute. Society evolves 
it becomes necessary for the services of the court to be in tandem with its development in order to meet with the modern day realities. Since cooperation is key, participants will learn more on ways to lighten the burden of the court by performing their duties efficiently and in line with global best practices. In Abuja, Dele Atsumbi, and News. The federal government says the newly released Teller maize seeds developed by Nigerian agriculturists are safe for human and animal consumption. The National Biosafety Management Agency says it has done a proper risk assessment and analysis to ensure the safety of the seeds for human health and the environment. The Teller maize was developed by Nigerian scientists in the Institute for Agricultural Research, Amadobelo University's area, and released to farmers this year. The Biosafety Management Agency says the application for the Teller maize was thoroughly examined by two committees comprising of experts and scientists from various relevant agencies and the academia, including National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, Nigerian Agricultural Quarantine Service, and National Agricultural Seed Council. Now, the National Cholera Multisectoral Emergency Operations Center, EOC, has been activated in Nigeria. As the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention, NCDC, confirms rapidly increasing cases of cholera with more records of fatalities, Lagos State is the worst hit. NCDC Director General Dr. Jide Idris says Nigeria is employing a One Health approach in the national response to control the spread of cholera with a wake-up call for governments at the subnationals to prioritize combat plans. This was at a news conference held at the NCDC headquarters in Abuja. Because the gravity of the situation and our unwavering commitment to protect the health and well-being of every Nigerian. The Emergency Operations Center will serve as a nerve center for the coordination of response across the country. It will also support affected states and local governments, facilitate rapid communication, data analysis, and decision-making processes, mobilize resources, strengthen surveillance and diagnostic capacity and capabilities, enhance case management, training and intensify public awareness and community engagement activities. Now let's have a quick look at the weather prospect for Tuesday, Niger and other parts of the world. This is where the news ends. Thank you so much for being a part of it. My name is Justin Bermuyan. Precious Zemina has been the sign language interpreter. I will say bye for now. <laughs>